Good morning. Welcome to Walking with Jesus Through the Word, one chapter per day. I'm Pastor Jason Van Bemmel from Forest Hill Presbyterian Church. This is day 31, which if you're keeping with us on schedule, we're at the end of January and we're at the end of our first month of what is going to be a three-year journey through God's Word together. Lord willing, if he blesses and sustains us. We're going to take a look at Matthew chapter 8 today. Maybe you're just joining in and just jumping in for the first time. Don't feel like you have to go back and catch up on the 30 days you missed. You can just stay with us from here on to the end. And if you want to at the end, you can go back and catch the ones that were from the beginning. I don't think they're going to be going anywhere. Or if you really want to try to catch up, you could do two a day and do one that you've missed and then stay up with us in the current ones. However that works for you, we're glad you're with us. I think it's important to read through God's word. And so that's what we do. We read the scriptures and we think about what God is revealing to us about himself and about his son, Jesus Christ, and about his will for our lives. So let's pray and then we'll dig into Matthew chapter 8. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word, perfect and complete testifying to us about your son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, showing us our need, showing us his righteousness, showing us your wisdom for our lives. Help us to hear your word. Help us to respond to your word. Help us to love your word. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Matthew chapter 8. When he came down from the mountain, great crowds followed him. And behold, a leper came to him and knelt before him, saying, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. And Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him, saying, I will be clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus said to him, See that you say nothing to anyone, but go, show yourself to the priest, and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a proof to them. When he had entered Capernaum, a centurion came forward to him, appealing to him, Lord, my servant is lying paralyzed at home, suffering terribly. And he said to him, I will come and heal him. But the centurion said, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only say the word and my servant will be healed. For I too am a man under authority, with soldiers under me. And I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he marveled and said to those who followed him, Truly, I tell you, with no one in Israel have I found such faith. I tell you, many will come from east and west and recline at table with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, while the sons of the kingdom will be thrown into the outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And to the centurion Jesus said, Go, let it be done for you as you have believed. And the servant was healed at that very moment. And when Jesus entered Peter's house, he saw his mother-in-law lying sick with a fever. He touched her hand and the fever left her, and she rose and began to serve him. That evening they brought to him many who were oppressed by demons, and he cast out the spirits with a word and healed all who were sick. This was to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah, he took our illnesses and bore our diseases. Now, when Jesus saw a crowd around him, he gave orders to go over to the other side. And a scribe came up to him and said to him, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Another of the disciples said to him, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, Follow me, and leave the dead to bury their own dead. And when he got into the boat, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great storm on the sea, so that the boat was being swamped by the waves, but he was asleep. And he said to them, and, and they went to him and woke him, saying, Save us, Lord, for we are perishing. And he said to them, Why are you afraid, O you of little faith? Then he rose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. And the men marveled, saying, What sort of man is this, that even winds and sea obey him? 
And when he came to the other side, to the country of the Gadarenes, two demon-possessed men met him, coming out of the tomb so fierce that no one could pass that way. And behold, they cried out, What have you to do with us, O son of God? Have you come here to torment us before the time? Now a herd of many pigs was feeding at some distance from them, and the demons begged him, saying, If you cast us out, send us away into the herd of pigs. And he said to them, Go. So they came out and went into the pigs, and behold, the whole herd rushed down the steep bank into the sea and drowned in the waters. The herdsmen fled, and going into the city they told everything, especially what had happened to the demon-possessed man, and behold, all the city came out to meet Jesus. And when they saw him, they begged him to leave their region. This is God's word, Matthew chapter 8. Jesus does not fit anyone's expectations, and Jesus will not be pressed into the world's mold. If you had taken a survey of important people in Israel in Jesus' day, and you were to ask them, who really matters for the kingdom of God? They would probably say rabbis, scribes, Pharisees. All the answers would be upstanding moral Jewish men. What do we see in Matthew 8? We see Jesus cleansing a leper. Lepers were unclean according to the Mosaic law and wrongly considered cursed by God by most of the popular culture of the day. We have a centurion. This is a Roman who's occupying Israel. He's part of the oppressive Roman Empire coming and enslaving God's people. We have a woman, Peter's mother-in-law, who is sick with a fever. And then at the end of the chapter, we see a demon-possessed man. And we don't know if he's Jewish or Gentile, actually two demon-possessed men. And we don't know if they're Jewish or Gentile, but they're possessed by demons. So you have a leper, you have a centurion, a Roman, a woman, a demon-possessed, two demon-possessed men. I mean, this is like a list of people who don't matter in the eyes of the established religious authorities of the day, and Jesus heals them. He heals them. He sees faith in each one of them in different ways. Um, he, he heals the leper because the leper comes to him and says, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. The leper is trusting that Jesus can do what he wants to do. The centurion has the greatest faith of all, and he's not Jewish. He's Roman, and he has faith that Jesus hasn't found anywhere in Israel as he understands that Jesus can command from a distance. Peter's mother-in-law, we don't really see any faith in her, do we? But we see her being touched by Jesus and then immediately rising to serve him. And then with this demon-possessed man, (laughs) he's possessed by a demon. The only words that come out of his mouth are the words of demons. And yet Jesus has compassion on him and sets him free. So Jesus has compassion, Jesus heals, Jesus saves unlikely people. And then in between, we have these men who make excuses. One, a scribe. Now he's someone who would matter within the kingdom of God, according to the popular opinion of the day. A scribe comes up to Jesus and says, teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. Really? Will you really? Jesus lets him know that he's homeless. Foxes have holes, birds of the air have nests, but Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. He's a homeless man. We don't hear from that scribe again. Another disciple, would-be disciple, follower of Jesus says, Lord, let me first go bury my father. And most scholars would say it doesn't appear that his father had actually died and he just wanted to go to the funeral service, but rather he was waiting until his father was dead before he would follow Jesus. So the scribe walks away because he doesn't want to be inconvenienced and have to deal with hardship. 
the man who's wanting to bury his father, he walks away because he wants to be able to put Jesus off until a more convenient time after his father has perished. But Jesus is active, and Jesus is reaching, and Jesus is saving. We also see the disciples who don't leave him, the disciples who are following him, and they're not having an easy time of it. They're on the sea in the storm. They are convinced that they are perishing. <laughs> Jesus is asleep. He's just, he knows he's safe in the Father's hands. He knows that his destiny is to die on a cross for the sins of his people. He's not going to die in a storm on a boat. So he's sleeping, trusting to God. But the disciples are waking him up and saying, save us, Lord, we are perishing. They're convinced they're about to die. And Jesus just says, why are you afraid, O you of little faith? And then he rises and he rebukes the winds and the sea. And there's a great calm. And now they're astonished at him. They don't know who this man is who's been with them. They've been following him, listening to him, watching him heal. They still don't know who he is. Who is this? What sort of man is this that even winds and sea obey him? So where are you with Jesus? Are you following him? Learning to trust in him? Putting up with the inconveniences, the trials, the tribulations? Or are you putting him off until a more convenient time? Are you asking him to meet your expectations? Or are you bowing the knee to his kingdom, to his lordship? And then if you belong to Jesus, are you reaching out with his compassion and his love, even to those who are marginalized, who are outcasts, who are considered unimportant in the eyes of popular opinion? Or are you just sticking to what's culturally normative and upholding the stereotypes of our culture in our day? Jesus challenges all of our assumptions and he challenges them with his love, his grace, and his saving power. Let's pray. Father, you sent your son to save sinners. He said, the healthy don't need a doctor. I've come for the sick. He said, I've not come for those who don't think they need salvation. I've come to seek and to save the lost. Father, we are on our own, the sick and the lost, the dying and the broken. And so we thank you for Jesus coming to save us. But we pray that you would give us the heart of Jesus for the sick and the lost and the dying and the broken, that we might reach out with compassion to show Christ to those who need him most. And I pray this, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, that's Matthew chapter 8, and we've come to the end of January, our 31st day. We're going to start uh, next time, day 32, February 1st, with Genesis 21. Hope you can join us. Have a blessed day in the Lord.